you have a yeah. you, okay so thanks for being here for the um, first steps in wiki function session and what we want to take a look at is how to create a function how to go about it how, uh, how to use this so um, a good place is usually to go to the suggest a function page and just like add something add an idea about you what you have to um, do today we'll just start with a simple function um, ourselves so the function I would like to suggest is to it takes a string and it doubles it it just like doubles the string that should be pretty simple to implement and should be uh, done in uh, enough time over here so we want to create a function and that is fine <laughs> so um, I entered the name for it which could be something like double string anyone have better names for that Duplicate. Duplicate is nice. It's probably better than double. Duplicate string. And the double as an alias. Okay, and this description could be something like takes a string and returns it duplicated. So the input is a string. The output is a string. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Just I don't remember it. Also, it added another language to add um, American uh, to enter the unspecified English too. I can. I can. I always go in the wrong direction. <laughs> and it is input. So there's actually everything you need to do in order to create a function. Um, so you need to know the types, how many of how many arguments you have, um, what types the argument should be, and give it a name. The name is even optional technically, but you probably should always give a name. So, and then we get to the function page. It asks for an input, but you can actually can run it because you don't have any implementations or anything yet. So we can again go to details. Here. So we have no tests, we have no implementation. And the first thing I would always suggest is after you created the function, create the tests first. Don't go immediately for the implementation. It makes it easier to um, always do the, the tests first. So we go down here, click on add test. And adding tests is a little bit mm, uncool. So we need to improve this a little bit. So basically you say, my function call is duplicate string. And it takes an input like, for example, I don't know, wiki. And now the question, and we need to check whether the output equals um, equals to what we expect. So not inequality, equality. Here we go. So, and here we have to make the decision actually did we mean something like this, or did we mean to have a space in between that? So and depending, those are two different functions, obviously, and both of them might be useful. And this is why it's good to have those tests, basically. The tests tell you what were you really thinking. They help you to, to specify what you actually meant, and then as a community, you can decide. There's also a nice thing about it is that the tests are not automatically approved. So you can say, here's a just a test, and this is what I would expect on this input. And then as a community can start discussing, oh no, I actually was expecting on this one, this, and we rather here, and then the approving of the, of the test cases um, basically tells you what is the semantics of the function that we're expecting. What, is, what does the function really mean that we are trying to build here? So 
Should we with or without space for the without. duplicate? What? Without. Without? With. With. We have one one. Without. <laughs> without. Without, OK. We're getting to without. <laughs> <laughs> the good thing is you can afterwards create one with. <laughs> That's right. So this is our first test. We have to duplicate string. Um, I should have given it a, a label. Um, duplicate wiki equals wiki wiki. This makes it a bit easier when we then see them. We don't have yet good um, naming conventions on those things, but um, I guess the community will work on it. We, in the <laughs> inclusive we. <laughs> you all can start. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so uh, shall we do another test? What other test could make sense? Blank. Blank, yeah. So duplicate. Those will look terrible, so I leave this blank. And enter here string equality. And leave this also blank. So the duplicate blank equals blank. So now we have two test cases. Should we make a third test case? Anyone has something interesting? So this is a bug here. It shouldn't say enter string. This is basically when we have the empty string here. So. <laughs> no more test cases are suggested? OK, in that case, now we can go, since we have to function near rights, and in the beginning, everyone who can edit the objects will have function near rights, you can actually just approve the tests uh, yourself. Say here, I'm connecting those tests. So those tests are now part of the test suite, and they will actually run against the things. It's connecting the function with the test. Um, I think we want to rename this into a proof. I'm not exactly sure. Just it from oh, so it connect is the last. Okay, good. Um, <laughs> I always forget that. <laughs> so, so basically, this means those tests are connected. The uh, if and this would mean it's it's not connected. Um, it's disconnected. So this one is not being run when we actually um, use it. Trying to figure out the naming still. <laughs> I mean, we only have control about the English name in any way. So, and even there, we don't really have control. So, yeah. Yeah, we can make another function afterwards um, with the, with the sp oh, yeah, oh, right, sorry. A test where we have, uh, okay, yeah, uh huh. This will look terrible. <laughs> I'm not sure. We'll see. Duplicate string. So why are there two of those? Uh, that's They're a good. Showing you the English and British English search results. Ah, because this is a British. Actually, the same results, and they don't need you to get. Ah, okay. One of the reasons I force myself to use British English as a database is to demonstrate bugs like this, <laughs> and making them fix them. Maybe demonstrate. <laughs> <laughs> so I use again. In the magical future, you won't have to choose the function here. It will be automatic. You just enter the input and the output. Um, we're not there yet. But you don't necessarily have to use the quality no. as your test. That's right. So I pressed two spaces here. I pressed one space here. You have to believe me because it's actually invisible. Name. Our name. We can rename that. <laughs> I'm not, actually not sure that no, if we that, keep that's the ah, that's a bug. No, it's, it's the HTML spec, plain Yeah, yeah, but we <laughs> probably have to turn this into NBSP. So yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> 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 
Yeah, something like this. <laughs> Need to figure out. There might be so many use uh, edge cases on both of them. Ah, there's so much things to work on. <laughs> my, my, my job is safe for a while. Um, <laughs> so. Let's also approve that one. Connect this one, sorry. <laughs> and add an implementation. What should we do our first implementation in? Python, JavaScript, or in the beautiful um, composition? All three. We will do all three, but which one first? Composition first? I love composition, that's my favorite. Okay, so. In composition, we basically take existing functions and try to make it happen what, uh, what we want to do. So in this case, we already have a useful function, which is a join strings function, which we will take um, as our, as our um, start. And the first string is the input uh, argument reference that we have. This should be automatically being displayed here. It's not, as you can tell. And Oh man, I need now the Z ID of the that I just created. <laughs> it doesn't show it here. Oh sure. So <laughs> there. Uh, You can come closer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I can't just enter K one here, right? Um, I need the actual set. Work. It might work because I can't figure out what the set ID is the, um, of the. Oh, right here. Okay. This is evil, and this should be already fixed. Uh, this should also be fixed. We have a we have a task for that. So basically, here I would se select the first um, argument. We only have one argument, and then I repeat the argument here. And basically, I, now what I did is I joined string on the two arguments. So if I close this, there's a little trick. It should um, oh, I said close. It should show you a little bit readable what we're actually doing here. So it joins strings on the two, on the input with the input. So we double the input here. And what we can do now is because we are we connected the tests already, I can run the tests now and see if they actually pass. And for a bit of luck, this will turn green in a while. So we know that all the tests that we have written pass actually for this composition that we just created. So we can give it a name. I can call this join strings input input. And publish it. So our first implementation for this is done. Now if we go back to the function, connected, we will be uh, able to actually call the function on the page. So if I now enter something like ABC, run the function, it should return me ABC, ABC, and it does. Sweet. So now let's impl do implementations in Python and in JavaScript, and then we will switch gears and you can actually go ahead and try implementation and James and I and maybe Nick will help us to, to uh, figure out how to do this. Okay, so let's make an implementation. Python or JavaScript first? Python. In this case, we helpfully display you the set ID that I needed earlier. <laughs> um, yeah, it is. So I can copy it easily by clicking on that. It's a neat little trick in the interface. And then just paste it here. It's also immediately in the death of anywhere. Sorry? It's also in the death. In the death? Death, okay. And that's the implementation in Python. 
And if we run out the tests, they all pass. And so, and we can publish this. Let's go ahead and do the one in JavaScript. Obviously, in order to use Wikifunction, you don't need to understand all the programming languages. In fact, you don't have to understand any of the programming languages. It's enough if you can read the composition. Just it can be sometimes helpful, if, for example, if a composition is slow or something like that to, to write um, an implementation. But this also can be done by someone else. It doesn't have to be happened by you, you might ask. Like, Folks, I have this very slow composition here. Can someone help me write something faster, maybe in JavaScript? So, and here. Um, is it also plus in JavaScript? Yep. Okay. Unless those are numbers. There should, there should be str uh, strings. We, oh. we are, uh, I think, You, oh. you can't. Oh, yeah, yes. Oh, that's a good idea. Okay, let's do that immediately. So we give it a name. Can it be the same name again? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Let's see. Now. Nah. We need to rethink a few things here. <laughs> so, let's now go and make a test with numbers and see what happens. Okay. I ah, know, here. I don't know why I was clicking there. So, in, now in this case, we can actually also approve those two. Um, connect also those two implementations. And we go and now create another test with numbers. So we say that, for example, with one, duplicate string on one. This is the string one, not the number one. The result should be exactly one, one. And now we can actually go ahead and immediately test the, against the implementations, not the other way around. So since we already have implementations, we can now test them and see if this will all work. Yeah. They all pass. <laughs> JavaScript doesn't do something weird like type coercion <laughs> this moment. <laughs> Like this? Yeah. I mean, we want to break it, so let's try out. Huh? Oh, no, it also works. Yeah, because we're wrapping it in the JSON context. Yeah, I think it's safe. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we have tests. Famous last words, right? That's why we have tests. Yeah. Exactly. Do we want to keep the 1.1 1 .1 or just the 1? No, keep the 1.1. We have the 1, just to be sure. This one. Yeah. Okay, good. I mean, you can also just create both of them. I just want to move on here. But, but this is basically the process that we're going here. So we, we can write testers. We make sure that they work, um, that all the implementations work with that, that the implementations are consistent against each other. We can then discuss things like, so oh, no, actually, this, those test cases should make this result, and so on. All of these things. Um, should be work in a wiki-ish way, which is the which is the new part, which is not exactly programming, right? Okay. So let's let's connect that test to. This will be interesting if it will manage to get the whole matrix done. Uh, 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 it might take a moment. <laughs> a lot of it should be partially running in. In caches, yes, very good. <clears throat> so, 
here we are. We have created a function. We have created four tests now, um, three implementations in different uh, ways. So we have questions. Yes. Um, if you delete a function, does it delete everything with it? No, it does not yet. Um, it's a good point. We should think about that. Because it, it seems like tests and everything else belongs to the function. Yeah, in theory, you can redirect the tests, for example, to a new function. But I'm not sure that this is more confusing or not. So we currently don't have the feature. It's not a bad idea. I think we should think about it, yes. Yeah, no, it's, it's good. It's a good idea, a good proposal. OK, any more questions at this point? So the question was, um, when we enter the parameters, it seems to automatically save. Oh, yeah, you can run the tests without having saved the, the function. So just running the test doesn't mean that I actually saved it and tested it out. I run the test and implementation that I just wrote live, basically, uh, without, having had the, uh, without having it stored first. Um, so yeah, this is in order to, so that you don't have to publish every time you try it out. Yeah. Could you repeat the uh, question for the recording? Yeah. So the question was, when I'm creating an implementation or a test while entering those things, and then I run the the um, the little circle that makes it run against the test or the, against the implementations, does it save it every time when I do that or uh, or not? And the answer is no, it doesn't publish at this point, it, uh, it basically runs it live, and it only publishes when you click on publish. So this allows you actually to, to start writing an implementation and, and until it finally passes against everything. More questions? Okay. Who here has already functioneer rights? <laughs> Okay, so who here now wants functioneer rights to play things out? Okay, um, you need to have logged into Wikifunctions at least once, which means if you have, uh, if you have. Special patch where admins can create a local account for you. Special create local Well, we don't want to create. You probably. Oh wait, everyone who wants an account, do you have a Wikipedia account? Yes, okay. Yeah. I expected that the Wikimania. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> so just go to Wikifunctions while you're logged in in Wikipedia or whatever, and it should automatically log you in on Wikifunctions. Mm. I already yes. requested Even better. And give me your names and I will give you the rights. For this, I will go to the other computer. <laughs> um, and James, you can have your computer back. And the presentation is basically at the end. So we can just create functions. Oh, yeah, we come up with something. You we can work together on what if you have questions. If you get stuck, we are here to answer. For now, I want to pick rights for everyone who needs rights. So sorry for the recording. Now it's a part that's not so interesting for the recording. <laughs> Okay. Sorry for the recording. Now it comes apart and it's not so interesting for the recording because we're going around in the workshop. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>